Welcome to another edition of Dog Talk and Coffee with me, Richard Hines. Okay. Oh. Here you come. Sit. Down. 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 Sit. All right, welcome to another edition of Dog Talk and Coffee with me, Richard Hines. And today we are going to be talking about the out command. If I ask for it, out. Good. Good boy. <laughs> I've been asked this over and over and over and over. I was planning to come out with an instructional, I still will on how to make a dog out on something, toy, sleeve, bite suit, so in play or protection. And outing is a critical skill, even for a pet dog. So, we're gonna jump into that now and talk about how to get your dog to out or let go of things when they're told. Okay, so, when we are doing out for play purposes, again, for pre-protection, dogs get amped up and they love to play with their toys or fetch a ball and they become obsessed, a lot will not let go, right? They will not give it to you. So they'll hold on to it, the ball, they hold on to it hard and not let you get it out of their mouth. Or, you know, especially when we're playing with protection caliber dogs and doing pre-protection, prep work, bite development, they get really crazy and you start doing the tugs and they don't want to let go, they're so obsessed. Bite pillows. <laughs> Any kind of toy a dog loves, right? Pet or or pre-protection and they just won't let them go. They just will not drop them. And the more you try to hold on, the more they pull, and they pull back, and they try to, and they wing it, right? Trying to clamp those jaws shut so that you can't have it. So, when it comes to outing, because we want to continue playing with the toy with them and have a good time, teach the bite works so that when they get really amped up, into that craziness of biting and shaking. When we say out, they are conscious, very quick, alert, aware, even though they're in that state of mind, to let go immediately when they hear us say that and let it go quick. Moose. Moose. Right, no nonsense. Okay, so then the key to this is the moment that they do that and they let go, we reward again right away to give the understanding, right? When you let go on cue, right away we will play with it again. Fuck it. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. 
fucking. Oh. Oh. It is not that you're not allowed to play with the object. You are. But you must heed the rules of the game and be disciplined. Because then we can't play together. You are doing it all, hogging the toy. And it's not going to be as fun as you think, but just sitting there. But we have to have a discipline to this. Okay? So, so we're giving, once they out, right away, yes, or okay. And they can bite again and grab onto the object and shake and play and tug, right? Whatever it is. So here I let them have. I pull on a little bit, I make more drive, more conflict for him. The more I pull on it, the more I turn him on, right? But the game is, here, I'm going to relax him, let him feel good. If I ask for it, out, good, good boy. And immediately, he has to let go of the toy. And generally, I'm not going to ask him more than once. I want him to let go of it immediately. Okay. And when I say okay, he can have it again. Hey. Boy. Out. Good boy, okay. Hey. And then we let him get at it, let him get at it, and then we ask for the out again. And I'm going to explain in a second how I do it. So, we're pairing and linking, letting go, even through negative, which we'll talk about in a second. And then, all right, and then we let him have it. Yes, yeah, you see when you let go, we play again. It's okay to play with this toy. I encourage it. It is not, I'm disciplining you because for you touching this object. So here is how we do it. So here I'll use Axel for a second. And I'm just teaching him right now, right here, how to let go of this ball. He has no out yet, no rules. He's toy crazy and he will not let go of things. So I need to teach him how to let go right now so that when I teach him protection very shortly in the next few weeks, that he will let go of the sleeves when I tell him, he will let go of the suit when he's told, and we have a discipline, right? That he just lets go, even when he's in a high adrenal state, a high aggression state, he must listen even though he's in those states. When I say let go, I don't care, you're rah, rah, shaking and aggressive, you hear me always and you let go, no matter what. So pay attention, okay? Unacceptable that if I tell you to out, even in aggression and protection work, that you need to do it quickly and right away let go. No exceptions. So here I play with the ball with him. He's gonna be grabbing it. He's not gonna let go of it. I hold it and I start tapping with the collar. He lets go. I tell him okay and we play with the ball again. Ow, 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 Ah, out. Okay. Good boy. Good boy. Oh, ah. Ah.
All right, so here with Axel, you're going to see, I have the ball, the string, he's pulling, again, he never lets go, he doesn't let go of things, he's very intense, treats won't do it, he will not redirect for that, when you have these kind of working dogs, the toys and the tugging and the shaking override treats, you cannot get him to let go that way, but, so, you're going to see, I tell him out, and what I'm doing is I have the E collar and I'm hitting the Nick button and just going tap, 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 tap until you see he lets go. Okay, so during this clip, that's what's happening. I have the E collar behind my back and every time I say out, I'm just going tap, 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 tap with the Nick button until he lets go. I'm using very low pressure. I want good response. I don't want fear. I want him to let go and then re-engage with the toy again when I tell him. Okay, so the levels are not that high. It's about his obedience level. So, you see here in a clip, that is what's going on. Okay, and now here, same session. This is his, still his first session ever of outing. Now here, I don't have the toy, I'm not holding on to it, he's holding on to it, and I'm testing now after, you know, five, ten minutes or whatever it was of teaching him to out, now I want to advance it and just have my hands down behind me, inside, whatever, and he's got the ball in his mouth, I'm just going to say out, and I'm not going to touch him and he dro he'll drop the ball and what he has to learn is when I say okay to be able to go and touch it again. So when I say out, he'll let it go. When I say okay, he's allowed to grab it again. Now since it's his first session, in this next clip I'm going to help him a little bit here or there just for him to be sure that he's allowed to go touch it again. So things like bending over a little bit to go towards the ball when I say okay to help him or kick the ball to make it move when I say okay that it's all good you can chase it whatever okay it's just linking the behavior for him helping a little bit since it's his first time ever and he did fantastic for the first time ever so here's a little bit of advancement of in the first session out okay good boy good boy out. Okay. Okay, good boy. Good. Out. Okay. Good boy. Good boy. Good. Okay. Out. Good. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Great for the first session. Okay. And all positive, you know, meaning with the collar. There was no exchange or anything like that. Treats or anything. Just a tiny little bit of annoying him with the collar for him to let go. And again, he will not let go of things. He's very tenacious about grabbing things and never letting it go. And you see very quickly with good attitude not afraid, play with the ball again. It's no problem at all when you do it correctly. So now here, that other golden, that this one here that I tell him out, he lets go right away on the little string there. He goes and grabs it and he lets go. If I ask for it, out, good, good boy. Hey, boy, out. Boy, okay. Ready? That golden is insane about toys, right? He was very aggressive when it came to possessing toys. Any other puppy would come near him, he would viciously attack him, right? He's very possessive over anything he's playing with. So 
when I would go to do it with him, he would never let go. Like he would never let go. And I tried food to, to do it in a positive way. Wasn't gonna happen. His drive was way too strong, right? And overrode food. So I had no choice with him. And that's how he was letting go as well. He had to go that route too. Now, there's the second way, okay? If I can, I'll do food to exchange. So here with this golden puppy, teaching him to retrieve, he's gonna be a service dog, and every time he goes out and gets an object, he comes back, I reward with food for him letting go of the object, and then I throw it again for him. He comes back, the moment he gets back to me, I grab onto it, I tell him out, I give him food, he lets go, good, and I throw it. Good boy. Good boy. Yeah. Fetch. Yeah. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy! Yes! Good boy! Good boy! Good boy! <laughs> yes! Good boy! Good boy! Good boy! So if you have a dog that will play that game with you and not be so crazy and tenacious over it, then you can get away with treat exchange, okay? Now, one thing you have to be careful with treat exchange is that a lot of times when a puppy knows that you have the reward or dog, they don't go out and get the toy anymore if they have really strong food drive. They just sit by you and go, I'm not gonna go get it, you have the food. Let me have it here. So you have to have a little bit of patience and technique, right? When a dog is so crazy of the food, now they don't wanna go get it anymore. And a lot of times they'll go get it, pick it up, drop it in the beginning, run back to you and they didn't even bring it back yet because they're already on the food thing. So that can happen often too. So you have to have good technique with that and patience, but that's a subject, another subject on how to retrieve. But simple there with that puppy. Gives it to me, out, he gets treat, and then I throw again for him as a double reward. He gets treated for the out, and then he gets the thing thrown again for him to go get it. Okay, so there are the two options depending on your puppy or dog, right? Most working dog, especially if they're older, you know, eight months up, the food drive, they're already done with that, and anything that they can tug and bite and grab most, right, generalization, most, will not take food anymore once they get toy crazy. And the e-collar is gonna be necessary. And having that, especially when they go on the bites, because we're not doing sport biting, right? Where it's all play and it's fun and it's not aggression, it's just playing on somebody. It's a big difference from a protection dog that we do that goes and bites somebody on the suit and you hear arr, 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 that, right? They're, they're in a different state of mind than a sport dog. So you see a lot of sport people, a lot of sport dogs, they'll take a tug, out and come off the sleeve or the suit and give them a toy, right? Because they have very prey-driven dogs. The game of protection in shuts and ring sports is very prey-driven, strictly. So it's not teaching them in the sport aggression, right? And I've said this many times. So you'll see trainers do that and go, okay, yes, and give them a bumper coming off somebody off the bite and do that if it works for you sure 
right? You can add that in. But just keep in mind, that's why it's difficult without pressure when you're doing real protection, not sport protection, right? There's two completely different states of mind in this now. And that's why with the e-collar, we're strictly going e-collar. So when we go to Sue's piece of cake, you know, we put them in real aggression and they're fired up and it's very easy. You know, the first time we might have to use the collar just to let them know now that the suit thing and you really want to get this guy, all rules apply. So then we never have to touch him with e-collars again. It's only the very beginning, probably first day. And from there on, when they're really max, you know, maxed out and really engaged aggressively hardcore, they still can listen and let go and they do not need to be e-collared, right? They understand the game. And then we let the decoy quickly give a bite again in return. Revere! Right? So the decoy becomes the object of reward. The dog lets go the first time told, and then the decoys move in certain whatever direction to let the dog know it's okay to bite again because the decoy moved. And now they sit there and they wait because they know that reward will probably come if they let go of the person quickly and they wait for them to make a move. So they're zoned in. And then the decoy moves away and the dog's allowed to bite again. That is how you reward in protection work instead of now with a toy. So that is the game of how to do the out. That is how to teach your dog to out. You have the e-collar version, you have the treat version, okay? And whatever works for your dog. So, I'm Richard Hines, and I will see you on the next video.